Here's one of Britain's best-loved authors, but Roald Dahl's fantastical characters are also perfect for the big screen. Let's take a look at some of the most famous movie adaptations of his work. His characters are often humorous. Surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. Don't be alone. Sometimes frightening, but always unique. And they translate perfectly to the silver screen. The late, great Gene Wilder's career highlight came with playing the eponymous title character of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Released back in 1971, it was one of the earliest screen adaptations of Dahl's children's stories. But it wasn't his first foray into film. He had previous screenwriter credits for James Bond's You Only Live Twice Keep clear! and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. This is Caractacus Potts, inventor extraordinaire. Dahl himself was disappointed in the adaptation, and so it wasn't until the late 80s and early 90s that more attempts were made to transform his stories for the screen. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big and you're small. I'm right. And you're wrong. A live-action version of Matilda met with critical acclaim. Dahl's children's stories often have a hint of darkness. The Witches, about a young boy who stumbles on a witch's plot to rid the world of all children, featured a terrifying Angelica Huston when it was released in 1990. I don't care. The third era for Dahl's books came in the 2000s with Johnny Depp taking on the role of Willy Wonka in 2005. Candy doesn't have to have a point, that's why it's candy. And then in 2009, Wes Anderson directed Fantastic Mr. Fox about one fox's trouble with his farming neighbors. It better not be. Actually, it was the first book I ever personally owned as officially my property. And it was uh, an, a, a book I loved as a child. And also, it, it was a book that introduced me to Roald Dahl's work in general. You know the secret whisperings of the world. And the latest movie is Steven Spielberg's The BFG, released earlier this year. I have seven children. I, I read the book to a lot of my children growing up, so I became the BFG while I was the storyteller of that book. And I so know what it feels like to be BFG, at least with my kids below me and me above them with the book between us. Dahl may have died 26 years ago, but his stories and the big screen adaptations of them are as well loved as ever. Films based on Roald Dahl's books seem to become cult classics almost instantly, regardless of how they do at the box office. To talk about these timeless movies, I'm joined by digital culture writer for The Independent, Jacob Stolworthy. Jacob, what makes these movies so magical? Well, it's a funny one, really, because I think it's, uh, they're kind of like the anti-family films. Uh, so like Disney, they're kind of magical for the obvious reasons, the fairy tale aspect and things like that. I think the, the thing with Roald Dahl films is that they actually focus on the, uh, the more quirky, grotesque side of childhood. And because of that, I think that's why uh, families find them uh, so refreshing and in their own way, magical. Uh, I feel like uh, also because of that, they kind of focus on more mature films that Disney films or, uh, or less grotesque films may focus on. So because of that, they, uh, they appeal to all the family. So they're perfect for sitting around with your parents, uh, with your brothers, with your sisters, and even with your grandparents. And, uh, and you know, you can experience that dull magic together. Mm -hmm. Well, any book lover will be quick to tell you the book was better. Roald Dahl famously loathed the movie adaptations of his books. Does this always mean the movie cannot stand on its feet? How do Dahl's book adaptations fare, as far as you're concerned? I mean, I think they can stand on their own feet, and I think the reason why that is is because uh, uh, Roald Dahl material uh, kind of gravitates towards directors with their own unique stamp. Uh, if you look at some of the directors who've directed Roald Dahl adaptations in the past, uh, Nicholas Rogue, Mel Stewart, even Tim Burton, they're directors with their own, uh, you know, with their own stamp. And I feel that uh, for a, a good example is actually Nicholas Rogue's uh, film version of The Witches, which, uh, I mean, I, I can see why Dahl wouldn't like some of his uh, books being made into films, uh, especially films that 
should appeal to children when that film is actually pretty scary. Like even for, for me as a 25 year old, I find that film pretty scary now. But I think that it's a, such a, it's such a unique uh, original version of Roald Dahl's book that they can, it can completely stand in its own two feet as a film by that director. Mm -hmm. Well, you did mention these at the start, but are the adaptations becoming more family friendly and losing some of the edginess that you also mentioned, such as in James and the Giant Peach and the Witches from the 90s? Yeah, um, I, I would say they are losing their, uh, their edginess uh, somewhat. And I think it's, it's kind of a shame, but I suppose it's because of the, um, uh, the distributors and the studios. Uh, back in the 90s, I feel there was no expectation and films uh, like The Witches, like Matilda, they, and James and the Giant Peach would not have uh, maybe done as well at the box office as uh, they would have done now because I feel like if they were made now they would have been uh, probably constructed with uh, uh, an element of the family friendly whereas the, the films in the 90s because of a lack of expectation perhaps they were very uh, able to kind of stand uh, stand pride, uh, stand proud as uh, a bit of a cult film actually and because of that now we look back on them uh, with um, nostalgia and we look back on them as being better than the films that are released now so the two that were released, the two that spring to mind now are Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Tim Burton and uh, the BFG, uh, the recent uh, film by Steven Spielberg and they, uh, they definitely do shun the, uh, the more odd elements of Roald Dahl to kind of focus on the, uh, the schmaltzy side of, of relationships at the centre of these films and these books. Mm -hmm. Well, we've recently lost Gene Wilder, who played Willy Wonka in 1971. What can you say about his iconic performance as Willy Wonka? Now, I'm probably biased because when I was about seven years old, I probably watched this film about eight times a day. But uh, what, what I can say is, as a child, right through to, um, to the age I am now, I view that performance as one of the best examples of a, uh, of, of, uh, a performance in, in a family film. And the reason for that is because I think he completely nailed what Willy Wonka should be. And what that is, he's, he's the kind of character who uh, you feel like you can rely on him. You feel that he is, uh, you know, that, that kind of sturdy uncle figure that you can uh, rely on for, for a laugh, uh, for advice. But the minute you cross him, he will probably push you uh, into, in, fr in front of a car. And, uh, you know, if you, say, if you say something he doesn't like, and I think that was so good about that role because he was so unpredictable, yet Gene Wilder, being the comedic actor that he was, he was so lovable. And I feel that is exactly what that role needed. And because of that, I will, I mean, for me, it's the role that I will always remember Gene Wilder by, uh, even though there's lots of other roles that I, that I love of his. Uh, but that one, I think, was a performance of a lifetime. And uh, rest in peace, Gene Wilder. Jacob, definitely agree with all of that. But how about Johnny Depp, who played the same character in 2015? Uh, well, the thing with Johnny Depp is, back in the day, uh, back in his day, in the early 90s, uh, when he was working with Tim Burton as well, he was a bit of a, uh, he was a, bit of a, 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 a wild card, and he gave some very good performances, namely Edward Scissorhands and Ed Wood. But the problem with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is I feel that Tim Burton came, in, came uh, onto this film uh, with no other actor in mind apart from Depp, and I think that Depp had just come off just come off the uh, the success of Pirates of the Caribbean, which he got an Oscar nomination for. And roles like that don't usually earn Oscar nominations. And I felt like he tried to do the same again, but instead, what he did was he kind of gave a very strange uh, off kilter performance, which is not a problem. But I think it was basically uh, it seemed inspired by Michael Jackson, even though he he always claimed that that was never never inten in intended and uh, he claims he tried, to he tried to do a very different thing to what Gene Wilder, uh, Gene Wilder had done in 1971 but instead I think he tried to homage the role without intending to and through that kind of not disrespected it but didn't do the job that he probably first thought that he, uh, he was doing. Inspired by Michael Jackson, I'd never heard that one before. But finally, the yeah. latest adaptation is Disney's The BFG, directed by Steven Spielberg. How did you find the movie, and where does it rank among the others? Now, uh, The BFG is a strange one for me. I didn't love it. Uh, a lot of my uh, friends and fellow journalists really enjoyed it. Uh, but for me, I felt like it was uh, a bit lazy. Uh, and not in, not in the... Uh, the, the visuals, the visuals were amazing, but I felt like he tried to uh, tried to do what Henry Selleck had done with James from Giant Peach, uh, what he did with stop motion, but they tried to do it with uh, 
the rotoscope and Mark Rylance uh, playing the, the, the big friendly giant, which was great, but I feel that because of that, it lacked a connection with me and with, 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 with a lot of the crowd where I, where I did watch, watch the film who did admit that they uh, kind of in the first hour were nodding off to sleep where, where there's lots of, uh, lots of lights flying around the screen and not much story propelling forward. Um, I feel that uh, it, it, it clawed its way back towards the end uh, when Spielberg, I mean Spielberg is a director who is very edgy and very uh, pioneering but when he's on family friendly mode I feel that he does kind of rest on his laurels quite heavily and uh, he does pull it back but by the time it's pulled back and you're, you're with the film I, it, it, it ends. So for me I actually feel that the BFG is lower, lower down the, uh, the Roll Dahl rung for me and mm -hmm. I feel that um, it, 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 it probably is just uh, you know, kind of there with Charlie and the Cho Chocolate Factory by Tim Burton, which I, which I hate to say and I never expected to say. But uh, yeah, the BFG, I'm not the biggest fan of that, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, Jacob Stolworthy, it's been very informative. Thank you for joining us. No, oh, I'm glad.